Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, Salam Alaikum. Hali Shoma. Sabah Khlir. Good morning. I'm very honored and pleased to be here, and uh, Mr. Matin, thank you very much for that uh, wonderful introduction that I don't know if I really deserve or not, but I'll, I'll take it for the moment. And thanks very much for facilitating this uh, dialogue uh, this week, putting all of this together with your associates and staff. Uh, it's, it's an honor uh, to be here and to be a part uh, of this, and I know too well that it is in fact a privilege uh, to be here. My journey with uh, Afghanistan started uh, quite a few years ago, well before my involvement as the Special Inspector General. Way back in 1986, I was privileged to command the Marine Security Guards who were responsible for security at our embassies throughout uh, this region. And that was uh, cause for me to visit Afghanistan because the Marines there and the embassy there uh, from a security standpoint were under my charge. That was my first uh, introduction and during the ensuing years uh, I monitored Afghanistan to ascertain the extent to which uh, Afghanistan would rise above its challenges at that time. It was under occupation by the Soviet Union. And when I flew into Afghanistan, I distinctly recall spiraling down into the Kabul airport in 1986 to avoid being shot down either accidentally or intentionally by the uh, Soviet-oriented uh, forces. Much has happened. In Afghanistan between 1986 and 2008 when I really re-engaged with Afghanistan as the Inspector General. And I'm always looking to, ask, to ascertain or to determine if Afghanistan is moving effectively and progressively along the continuum of development. When I was asked in 2008, as has been pointed out in my uh, introduction this morning, to take on the task of Special Inspector General for Afghanistan, uh, I really did not uh, hesitate because I saw it as uh, an opportunity to contribute. And I'm of the opinion that you are here because you feel that there is an opportunity to contribute. And as I dialogued with several of you yesterday during the afternoon sessions at the various tables, I find that you are heavily uh, engaged. And for me, that's uh, more than a sign of progress uh, towards this uh, ultimate end that I would like to see come about, where Afghanistan um, has transcended its uh, many years uh, of strife and uh, has been moved into a new light, making the people better off and their children better off in the future. I believe that uh, despite the war, with all of its aftermath, incredible numbers of people dead, Afghans from the international community, people that I actually knew uh, in my work, in Afghanistan having uh, perished. Despite all of that, I am of the opinion that Afghanistan is moving along the continuum towards a better place. And unless you tell me otherwise today, I am going to leave this summit uh, with the opinion that you no less are optimistic about the future of Afghanistan. As I sat and listened to the briefing yesterday on the new Kabul city, 
I was rather impressed. And uh, while I had heard of the new Kabul city before coming here, uh, I would like to have seen it much more publicized in the public media. I would like to see this on CNN or on Fox News, by which I feel the vast majority of Americans are driven. Because it's a very positive story. The new Afghanistan city could be the icon of the future Afghanistan with all of the positive aspects of it that one uh, might wish to see in Afghanistan. I'm mar I marvel at the extent to which the international community came together to support Afghanistan. You may know that there are 49 countries contributing to uh, Afghanistan, and they have been engaged with Afghanistan and the rest of the international community for uh, quite some time. I think this is uh, a very good reflection on the extent to which the global community will come to the rescue of even the most challenged, or one no less of the most challenging environment in the world, risking their own lives, risking their resources to make a nation uh, a better place. And that is not uh, without consideration that the nations who are here can, uh, are in Afghanistan, supporting Afghanistan, do have interest above and beyond Afghanistan. And I would like to say that's just fine. But the main effort, of course, is towards improving Afghanistan and at the same time satisf satisfying certain uh, national uh, strategic interests to include those that the United States uh, may have. When I made my first trip into Afghanistan in September of uh, 2008, I was hit with a deluge of complaints from the highest level of the government to anyone, practically, with whom I uh, was privileged to interface. What was the question and what was the issue? Capacity building. The major complaint was that the international community had gone into uh, Afghanistan, uh, mostly pursuing what appeared to the Afghans to be the international community's principal objectives rather than those of Afghanistan, even though what was being put forth in Afghanistan was of considerable value to uh, the country. But the Afghans felt that they were left by the sidelines. And we, the international community, came in with our multiple resources uh, and imposed, as at least seen from the Afghans, on their culture, on their environment, and did not include the Afghans to the extent that they should have been. And this sentiment continued throughout my tenure as the Inspector General. So um, what we failed to do in that regard is to build the capacity of which many of you spoke uh, or heard uh, presented from this platform uh, yesterday. Now to rectify this situation, uh, I do know that um, a new program over the past couple of years uh, has been put in place intended to focus more on the government of Afghanistan and be more inclusive of that government and uh, of its people. So as I sit through this summit, I'm listening to hear the extent to which this is in fact a reality as opposed to just a policy that we talk about but really are not implemented. I might parenthetically say that I sense a little bit that uh, there is a bit more uh, interest in the capacity building aspect of Afghanistan than there was during the first several years uh, of the conflict. When I took over the Office of Special Inspector General, 2008, uh, June is when I actually was appointed, July of 08 is when I was sworn in. Without any money to do the job, 
that I was asked to do. But somebody eventually came, uh, and I was certainly uh, uh, very uh, satisfied with that. But we um, did the best that we could to provide the oversight that was necessary to ensure that the $32 billion uh, was maximized. This $32 billion represented exclusively U.S. corporations. When I left the office, it was $61 billion, and as of March of this year, the investment is $89 billion in Afghanistan. Where did this money go? It went largely to building the Afghanistan security forces. $52 billion of that $89 billion has gone towards security in Afghanistan. $22 billion for governance and development. $6 billion for counter-narcotics. $2.5 billion for humanitarian aid. $6.5 billion for oversight and operations. So a lot of money has gone into Afghanistan to make it a better place. And I do know that it is a better place. There are better roads now. There are more young men and women being educated. There is a shorter walk for medical uh, attention. And I would be remiss if I did not quickly tell you this little uh, vignette. I visited a province, you are familiar with it, the uh, Afghan persons who were here and maybe others as well, Gore. And they took me uh, to a village, to a school. I did not ask to visit there, but that's where they took me and I was very pleased by it. And I asked the little children in the province of Gore, what were their four top concerns? In other words, what did they want for their country? And they told me, those little kids about so high, the same thing that the senior leaders of Afghanistan told me. They wanted energy, electricity. They wanted better education. They wanted roads. They wanted to improve agriculture, which represents 80% uh, or affects no less than 80% of the people in Afghanistan. And then uh, the group yelled, they were yelling these things out to me uh, with a translator uh, translating and informing them of my question on, their, on my behalf. They said, we want a floor in our school. And uh, nothing throughout my entire relationship with Afghanistan touched my heart more than to hear those little children say that they wanted a floor in their school. Because if I were to ask that question of the community from which I come and came in South Carolina, they would want a new iPod. They would want a new telephone of some sort or a new game to play. These young men and women in Afghanistan wanted a new floor or a floor in their school. That was very touching. And uh, it just solidified my commitment to ensuring, or contributing to making Afghanistan a better place. You may know that if uh, the President of the United States budget is approved by the current Congress, the United States alone will have contributed a hundred billion dollars by the end of this fiscal year to the reconstruction uh, in Afghanistan. I would be remiss if I did not, as a former Inspector General, tell you and inform you of the importance of honesty and integrity and accountability in everything, but especially in the uh, communities from which you come and that you represent. If you want access to any of those remaining hundred billion dollars appropriated by the Congress of the United States of America, you and I and we have to be honest in our dealings, exercise the greatest in integrity and accountability in everything that we do. The office that I was privileged to put together with a lot of help is still active and
and involved. The gentleman who currently is the acting inspector general is someone that I hired, and he is a hard man. And I'm sh sh sharing with you, doing my next uh, couple of minutes here because I'm already on countdown, the red light is on, some of his most recent findings. And I think they are profound. $259 million identified as funds that are in the wrong place. There are a number of investigations that are ongoing. And just to recap, over the life of Cigar, about $53 million uh, have been uh, recovered from people who have directed it in a, in a wrong way or have uh, intended to personally benefit from it. There have been 20 convict convictions, 29 arrests, 10 charges, 164 ongoing uh, investigations. And I hope that no one in this room uh, is a part uh, of that. There have been a lot of debarments and suspensions. And um, you can't get your work done if you are in an investigation, for sure. And certainly, if you are suspended or uh, debarred. We talk about the future of Afghanistan. In order for that future to come about, there must be a favorable business environment. And that business environment has to be represented by honesty, integrity, and accountability. You, as contractors and businessmen and women, play a major role uh, in that regard. You have been a major part of where it is that we find ourselves in bringing Afghanistan uh, into the 21st uh, uh, century as a better place in which to live. And I know too well that no institution, to my knowledge, receives more oversight and more scrutiny than the business community, than the con contract community. I know because that was my job to do and on which to report to the Congress of the United States. So I leave you this morning with a few uh, lessons learned. Let us not forget about the capacity of the nation uh, which is hosting us, the international community. And let me just speak specifically about my own country, the United States. Let us not forget the capacity building aspect of our involvement with the, the host country. Let us not forget that sustainment is a major part of the investment. If we don't build capacity, uh, it will be hard to sustain, and then the investment on behalf of your dollars, and oftentimes our blood, uh, will not reach its full uh, potential. I would also suggest that we be a partner uh, in whole and not in part. When we commit, let us commit wholly as equal partners in whatever it is that we find as our uh, strategic interest. So I leave you with the question this morning, uh, is it worth the effort? I am leaving personally with the conclusion that it is. Thank you.